Senators, uh, the horse and greyhound racing industries occupy a key position in the Irish sporting and social landscape, and we as a nation have strong affinity not just with racing but with the social scene at its core. These industries receive financial support from the state through the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund under Section 12 of the Horse and Greyhound Racing Act 2001. My department makes payments from the fund to Horse Racing Ireland and to Board Nagan. In the period 2001 to date, a total of $1.12 billion has been paid from the fund to the horse and greyhound racing industries in accordance with the provisions of the Act. The cumulative upper limit on payments from the fund provided under the relevant regulations has therefore been reached. Exchequer funding provided from the fund is pivotal to the survival and continued develop development of the horse and greyhound racing industries. In order to give effect to the provisions of Budget 2018, this cumulative upper limit must be increased by regulation. In order to allow my department to provide the monies allocated in Budget 2018, it is necessary to comply with the technical requirement under Section 12, Subsection 13 of the Horse and Greyhound Racing Act to increase the cumulative limit on the amount payable from the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund by 80 million to some 1.2 billion. The recent Deloitte report commissioned by Horse Racing Ireland indicates that the total direct and stimulated expenditure of the Irish breeding and racing industry is estimated at 1.84 billion euros in 2016. The core industry comprising of 914 million of this, with secondary expenditure the remaining 927 million. In addition, it is estimated that there are 15,200 jobs at the core of the racing and breeding industry or in directly related industries. The achievements of Irish bred and Irish trained horses abroad and the enduring influence of Irish born jockeys and stable staff underscore Ireland's global prominence. We hold the distinguished position of being the third highest producer of foals, coupled with having the third highest number of active brood mares in the world. Government funding is crucial in order to maintain and build on our position as one of the world's leading breeding and racing nations. Government funding of this key industry is an excellent opportunity to yield a high return for its investment, leading to a flow of income right through the economy. Support for certain strategic industries is important for future economic growth and can provide widespread benefits for our society as well as for our economy. The greyhound industry is a significant industry for Ireland. It has been embedded in Irish society for decades and is an important activity from an economic, social and cultural perspective. It provides and supports considerable employment, both directly and indirectly, across the country. The Irish greyhound sector has come through challenging times during the economic recession, but it continues to make a significant economic and financial contribution to the Irish economy, particularly at a local level. The Board Nagan annual reports indicate that despite a severe recession, the industry is recovering, showing an increase in operating surplus in 2015 and again in 2016. The funds generated from greyhound racing are reinvested in the industry through contributions to prize money and grants to various bodies involved in the greyhound racing and breeding sector, as well as promotion of greyhound welfare and the regulation of the industry. It has also contributed significantly to the improved facilities now available at greyhound tracks around Ireland. Greyhound racing is an activity that is inextricably linked to the farming community and while it is undoubtedly part of the fabric of rural Ireland, it also enjoys a strong urban base. The Horse Racing Act 2016 introduced a range of improvements in governance and accountability arrangements, many of which derive from recommendations made by Indicon Economic Consultants following their review of the sector. Indicon International Consultants were also commissioned to conduct a review of certain matters relating to Board Nagan in order to assess, assess the suitability of the legal governance and regulatory framework supporting the greyhound industry and to identify opportunities to maximise its commercial income. In response to the recommendations made in the Indicon and Morris reports and in the report prepared by the Joint Committee on Agriculture, Food and the Marine, I have introduced a draft general scheme of the Greyhound Industry Bill. The bill addresses the governance of Board Nagan, it strengthens regulatory controls in the industry, modernises sanctions and improves integrity with a view to building a reputation for exceptional regulation in the sector. As you are aware, the draft general scheme of the bill has progressed through the pre-legislative scrutiny phase and it is hoped that a memorandum will go to government in the coming weeks requesting approval to publish the updated general scheme and to submit it to the Office of Parliamentary Council for drafting. I believe that this bill will bolster the Irish greyhound industry, enable it to deal with existing challenges and maximise its future potential. 
In conclusion, I'm sure we're all in agreement that more balanced regional economic growth is desirable, and indeed this is a key priority for government. In this context, these industries should be given recognition for the considerable contribution that they make to rural economic activity and employment. The usually important contribution made by the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund since its inception in 2001 has been vital to ensuring that these industries can continue to invest in their infrastructure. Section 12, subsection 13 of the Horse and Greyhound Racing Act 2001 provides that a draft of these regulations be laid before both houses of the Oireachtas and a resolution approving the draft be passed by each house before the regulations are made by the Minister. Accordingly, I am asking you all for your support here this evening to ensure that Horse Racing Ireland and Bordnagon receive the funding provided for in Budget 2018 and that the very important role played by these industries and the economic activity generated by them are sustained into the future. I commend this regulation to the House and I look forward to discussing any matters rising. Thank you. Carly. Minister, thank you very much. Minister, I neglected to welcome you to the House before you spoke, so I'll take this opportunity to do that. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Uh, Senator Paul Daly, you have six minutes. Uh, thank you, Acting Cahirlock. At the outset, Minister, I'd also like to welcome you to the House and I'd like to take this opportunity to extend my personal and my party's sympathies to you on the recent death of your father over the weekend. Uh, Minister, I welcome the bill and will be supporting it. The Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund Act was introduced by Fianna Fáil in 2001. And while I welcome the bill and, as I say, I will be supporting it, I do actually feel that the, the amount of money that's been put into these two very uh, invested very well in both these industries could be increased. And if we could in some way return to the model of which it was initially introduced, where the fund provided annually was based on the off-course betting income levy of the previous year. And because of the fact that the, this levy decreased and during the economic crisis, we now have to, we've, we've a net cost to the exchequer over and above the betting intake. And I would request you, Minister, if you could, with your colleagues <coughs> in finance, to readdress the uh, Gambling Act and the income, potential income that's out there from online offshore gambling in particular. And I would be very cognizant of the fact, if you do and when you do that, Minister, that you would bear in mind that it is online. I would be interested in seeing being increased. I do think we could bridge the gap and indeed increase the fund that's been paid to HRI and Borden Gun. Uh, but you would have to be cognizant in doing that of the pitch bookmakers and the independent bookmakers, high street bookmakers, who are, to kind of phrase, a dying race. And those of us who attend race meetings, the pitch bookmaker, the betting ring, is an integral part of the experience. And they are in competition with the online side of things at the moment, and they possibly will not survive. So while I'm looking for an increase in the intake from the betting side, I would be very, very much fearful of their future. So I, I would I'd like you, if looking at that, to be able to come up with some device that would be actually incentivise that sector of the betting industry, but try and bridge the gap to eliminate the net cost of the exchequer between the online betting income and the Greyhound, um, <coughs> the horse racing and Greyhound fund. This fund, um, some people query it that we would be given money of this size to a sport as such, but as you've quite rightly said, Minister, it's an industry and a thriving industry, and it's an industry which is predominantly uh, based in rural Ireland, and it is creating between the two sectors in the region of 25,000 jobs. And as you said, the combined uh, spend, let it be directly and indirectly, through within the industries and through tourism, through people's attendance at race meetings and greyhound meetings, is 2.34 billion. So as the saying goes, you have to speculate to accumulate. And I think it is a very worthwhile um, investment from the Exchequer's point of view when you see the return of, in the region of 2.34 billion, a combined figure between the greyhound and the horse racing. And it is the small. We, 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 we congratulate and we gloat to an extent on our enormous worldwide success and international success. And I take this opportunity to congratulate both Aidan and Joseph O'Brien and Willie Mullins on their recent success in the Melbourne Cup. And there are an echelon of people in, in, in the sector who do reach that peak and that pinnacle. But this fund keeps the people that are at the bottom of the pyramid going. And without that conveyor from the small two, three, four broodmare breeding outfits 
the small training yards with a small number of horses, the small race tracks like Kilbegan, which I am involved in, and <coughs> I have no doubt that the Senator on the other side will take the opportunity to mention Ballon Robe. I make that prediction during her, her few words, Ballon Robe race course will get a mention. But those provincial race tracks, those small trainers, breeding outfits, they are the people, they're, they're the people who are the most dependent on this fund. And without their survival, we won't have the conveyor. We won't have the the horses coming through from the point to point. We won't have the young jockeys getting trained who can eventually and will dream and hopefully someday be at the top of the spiral. So it is a very worthwhile investment in an industry that's an integral part of our makeup. Um, I, 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 as I said at the outset, Minister, I would like to see this fund actually been increasing and I think it can be done at no extra cost to the Exchequer in, in the means I have said and in particular in the year coming. The horse racing Ireland is an all-island body, and we all are fearful and wary of Brexit, and we have no idea where it's going to go. So there is every possibility that this industry is going to need more funding to sustain itself at maximum, without maybe even improving. And as they say, the day you stand still is the day you start going back. We don't know with Brexit. The fact that it's an all-island industry, and the fact that their other main source of income is the sale of their media rights, which is a deal done in Stirling. So we don't know what's down the line there. They may need, for survival alone, extra funding going forward. So we have to be cognizant of that fact. With regard to the Greyhound sector, uh, Minister, you've mentioned the Greyhound Bill, and I would urge you to get that bill through Cabinet and get it in, into motion as soon as possible. We're all aware and very aware of the political circumstances we found ourselves in over the weekend. And while the Greyhound Bill may not have been that high up on a lot of people's priorities of what would have went out with the Batwater, it is one that would have ended up on the shelf for God knows how many more months. So I would urge you to get that bill through Cabinet as soon as possible and get it before us here in the Houses, as it is a very necessary instrument for the Greyhound industry going forward in improving and enhancing their governance, um, their administration and animal welfare. In conclusion, Minister, I know there has been an Indican report on harness racing and there's a request for seed funding. And I would like maybe I'd like you to address that. But I would also be asking for additional funding for that going forward. I wouldn't like to see, contrary to everything I've said to this point, that you might decide to divide the existing fund three ways. And in conclusion, what came up during our committee stage as well, I know it's unrelated to the bill, but you have to be very cognizant again for in, within the industry, Minister. There are a couple of issues, basically employment law and rate valuation. And while we're funding an industry here, there are other arms of the state which are trying to take money back out and take conditions back out of that business. And while you probably won't be able to comment because of WRC issues, etc., I'd like you to keep an eye on where the line is drawn when a farming activity stops becoming a farming activity in particular with rates and with uh, work employment law. Garmad. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Breen O'Donnell, you have six minutes. Uh, and um, like my colleague, Senator Daly, I would like to begin by offering my uh, heartfelt condolences to Minister Creed, who is here this evening on the death of his father, Donald. Uh, who I understand served in Dáil Éireann as a member for some 22 years, uh, passed away, and the funeral was only this week. And it's remarkable, in fact, that you are here serving your country again uh, in the Houses of the Oireachtas this week, Minister. And uh, please accept uh, my deepest uh, sympathies at this time. Uh, this evening, the uh, motion before us, the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund, is an important uh, revenue uh, resource to the horse racing industry and to the greyhound sector. Uh, the horse racing industry is crucially important to the economic output of uh, the Irish economy uh, and to our international footprint abroad as well. Uh, the, uh, in, the sector has been transformed through legislation brought before the Oireachtas in recent years uh, to, um, to develop the industry, uh, and its achievements are quite remarkable. Uh, and uh, the value for money derived from the investment uh, is uh, unquestionable within the horse racing sector. Uh, but sadly, uh, on the other uh, spectrum, the greyhound sector uh, is 
uh, leaving a lot to be desired. Um, uh, I had the pleasure this afternoon of meeting with the new CEO of the Irish Greyhound Board, um, Mr. Ger Dollard, uh, a gentleman, and uh, I wished him well. And I do hope that he will listen now to the grassroots of the sector and that uh, the sector can move forward. There are critical issues um, that uh, deserve uh, attention and uh, not least the whole issue of uh, the, the funding, uh, the standalone uh, uh, funding uh, of the industry, uh, issues around transparency within the industry, accountability over the money that, that is being spent, uh, and the breakdown of the Gray, uh, Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund. Approximately uh, 16 million of the fund goes to the greyhound sector next year. That's just over 300,000 a week to the I Irish Greyhound Board. Uh, and uh, irrespective of the amount of money, there remains crucial questions coming from the grassroots of the, the, the ordinary greyhounds, uh, breeders and owners, uh, which remain unanswered. Now, I have confidence in the new CEO from my meeting with him this afternoon uh, that he is willing to engage, to listen, uh, and I very much welcome that. I uh, do think that uh, the greyhound industry itself has the potential has the potential to be a standalone sector even without this subvention from government. I'm not suggesting for one moment that the subvention shouldn't be there. In fact, it should. But uh, the, it has the potential. But at the moment, given what is happening within the greyhound industry, we have 16 stadia, some of which are being in the process of being taken over by the banks, including one in my own county in Lifford. Uh, so, uh, of the 16, eight are owned by the IGB and eight are privately owned. I think that, that there's a rational need to uh, provide, um, uh, um, to improve the, the corporate governance of the uh, Irish Greyhound Board by improving transparency, uh, by improving communications, by improving the accountability, uh, by uh, utilising uh, the full potential of the sector. And I do believe that one of the ways of doing that is through the Greyhound Bill, which is due to come before these houses. And I would appeal, Minister, in the strongest possible terms, to have that bill before these houses as quickly as possible. Uh, I haven't read the bill yet, uh, and I reserve my judgment. Uh, and uh, if I feel the need, I will certainly be bringing forward amendments to the legislation. But I do feel that it uh, provides the roadmap uh, to transform the industry and to breathe fresh air into the industry. The uh, Minister of State at your own department, Andrew Doyle, did an excellent job when he was chairman of the Agriculture Committee. I served on that committee. We uh, met with all of the interested stakeholders within the greyhound sector. We published recommendations, 16 of which were contained within the report. And I do hope that those recommendations will be contained within, uh, within that particular bill. Uh, there are very serious issues around the drugs within the greyhound sector. Uh, for example, uh, one of the greyhound trainers who was fined after a greyhound tested positive for a prohibited substance uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, earlier this year was awarded the Irish Greyhound Review Personality of the Year. I don't think that sends out the right message of transparency and integrity. Clearly it doesn't. And uh, because that is happening and because all this, the transfer of money from the fund goes across to the organisation, there is an urgent need to review what is actually happening here. Uh, I have many examples uh, that, I could, uh, that I could provide to the House here this evening. There are other issues around the artific artificial insemination and illegal dogs continuing to run in various meets up and down the country. Those issues need to be addressed. Uh, and uh, I also uh, I'm not sure what the intention is around the actual board of the Irish Greyhound Board, whether there's a, a proposal minister to review the membership of that board, uh, the chairmanship of that board, who has been there now uh, um, um, and has seen five chief executive officers uh, come and go during his tenure. Maybe there's a need to freshen up the board uh, with new membership, uh, because clearly there is uh, uh, questions being asked by the grassroots around their uh, confidence 
in uh, certain members of the board. And I think when those questions are being asked, there's a need to listen to those uh, views and to reflect on them and to act on them. And I would urge you to do so. But uh, certainly, um, uh, I look forward to the Greyhound Bill coming before us here uh, very shortly. Thank you, Senator. Senator Michelle Mulhern, six minutes. My God. Um, last guy here, look. Uh, Minister, I'd like to welcome you, and uh, I'd also like to uh, put on the record my condolences to you and your family on the loss of your father, Donal. Uh, I think we all know in politics, whatever your personal circumstances, it just keeps rolling on, and uh, it doesn't stop for anything. So, but yet, uh, significant personal things can happen in our lives. So, just to, to say that uh, to you here today, um, I. I think it's very appropriate um, that uh, we are here to talk about the additional funding or the funding that's been provided in Budget 2018, the 80 million uh, for our horse and greyhound racing industries, and to talk about the growth and the contribution they make to uh, our local economies which is critical in rural areas, but indeed the national um, economy. Um, I think it's very appropriate also uh, when we look back over many, many generations when people in this country were living hand to mouth and probably they couldn't afford to have horses uh, for the purpose of racing and that, but people, Irish people, um, something I suppose running through our veins is a, a passion for horses and dogs and I suppose all sorts of animals but um, so it's a, a long long tradition and it's not just for kings and queens uh, it's been for the ordinary person and to think now that we have a fully fledged industry today uh, that's very labour intensive uh, provides um, a lot of employment in areas of the country where uh, it's harder to encourage employment and also I suppose the breeding of these animals, the horses, the dogs, um, it's, it, it all contributes to I suppose the industry and uh, of course now it's not just ourselves that are attending races, we have tourists and also particularly in the horse racing industry um, our, our animals, our horses uh, are, are renowned as thoroughbreds and they are very desirable on international markets. So I think it's only right that we would invest in the industry. It in effect is investing in our people and investing uh, in our economy. Um, as we are investing great funds and monies in both uh, uh, greyhound and horse racing, it is very important that we have accountability, which I suppose is the buzzword of this week, um, in all things financial. Um, I note that um, the Horse Racing Ireland Act um, basically gave um, effect to the Indican report, and that really, I suppose, modernised the horse racing industry in terms of governments and accountability. And uh, now we're set to follow suit uh, with the implementation of the uh, Indican and Morris reports uh, under the Greyhound and Industrial uh, Industry Bill, which I would hope would speak to the concerns that uh, Senator Breen O'Donnell has raised. Like nobody, nobody can stand over money being any suggestion that money has been spent where it should be spent. Uh, issues around animal welfare. I mean, you know, we can have both. It's just we have to have standards and we have to implement standards. And, you know, because uh, there can be animal welfare issues is not a call to shut down an entire industry, in my view. And we have to get the balance right. But we have to be very tough on people who, ab who abuse animals. And, um, you know, and that also involves people coming forward and, and pointing it out and calling it out. Um, and as my... Um, as my colleague across the, the house there has rightly pointed out, I just like technology at a local level. I see people, they love their dogs, they love their horses. And, you know, the, the race meetings at Bell and Robe Racecourse are, you know, they're a, a, a great source of local pride. They're mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. social and they really are a tonic uh, to get out of an evening and, and meet people. Uh, and it's all our own homegrown um, leisure amenity and I just want to commend the people there who, who operate it and I know these funds are critical uh, to their ongoing good work and expansion and I know that they do their level best to, to bring in people into the local area and make the most of it for the local economy and um, so I think as I say Minister this is, this is very worthwhile and I'm glad to see government and uh, opposition in support um, of the, uh, the, 
object or the objects of uh, this uh, matter here before us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator, um, Senator McLaughlin, six minutes. Hi. Um, Minister, uh, as you know, we had an opportunity to um, discuss uh, this issue in the, uh, the Agriculture Committee. Um, and while I was there, I had raised my, my concerns in, in relation to the Irish Harness Racers, uh, Racing Association. And I, I want to acknowledge, uh, Minister, that um, I, I know that you, you are supportive of what they're trying to do. And uh, I want to acknowledge the comments that you made in the committee, and I appreciate those comments. Uh, I also know from the part of the country that you're from, you appreciate the potential uh, of all of this. However, the, the, the difficulty is, is that we have this motion here in relation to funding for the uh, horse racing and the greyhound uh, industry. And I would see this as very much related in terms of the IHRA. I'm also mindful of the Indicon report being published earlier this year. Now, I know in the committee you stated that you know, you would need, and I appreciate this, your department would need, you know, a five-year strategic plan. Uh, you would need assurances around corporate management and so on before uh, money uh, can be released. But there's a, a sort of a chicken uh, and egg, uh, and dare I say horse and cart uh, problem here in terms of the sequencing, because they, they, they do need, um, they need seed funding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they need seed funding to get themselves in a position to do what you've asked. And, and, and in fairness, you know, uh, if corporate management and structures weren't right, opposition would be the first people to complain and, and challenge government and the department. So you do have to do those things and you have to, you know, get uh, all of those assurances uh, uh, that the money will be utilised and spent properly. But I have no doubts. Uh, they absolutely want to do that. They just need some financial assistance. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking this opportunity, Minister, to say again, if your department could release seed funding to allow them to pull all those structures in place and then be in a position to draw down uh, the capital funding that's required to let them develop the potential, as you know, of, of their industry. You know, you know that there is um, significant investment coming in from France uh, and elsewhere. There's a real interest in the Irish product. Uh, it is um, a sport that's unfortunately uh, drifted uh, you know, over the years from what it had been uh, here in Ireland, but it'd be wonderful to bring it back again. I think you have high caliber people, very committed. They're volunteers um, that, you know, uh, right now, uh, but they want to step up. And I'm just asking the Minister, if you're in your department in a very collaborative and um, facilitative way could just work with them uh, around uh, all of that. Um, I, I, I would like to see the funding that they're asking for released uh, in 2018. And I put it here on this record and I've put it on, on, the, on the Oireachtas Committee. The other thing to say too is that the Oireachtas Committee on Agriculture on an all-party basis has been very supportive of the potential of the IHRA for a number of years uh, in the previous Oireachtas. Um, it, that's what led to the Indicon report uh, being there, and we continue on an all-party basis in the Agriculture Committee to be supportive of this. So this is not uh, a plea from me; it's a collective plea from all the members of that committee, and you can see that at the last. So I just put that again. My, 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 my next comments, Minister, are my concerns um, around problems in the greyhound industry with doping uh, or alleged doping. I, 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 I sadly have to raise. Um, uh, the, the, the issue um, of, of, uh, of the, the, the dog uh, Clonbrian uh, hero. And uh, it's quite a disturbing debacle when you see the Washington Post uh, having to write about this issue. And firstly, we have the, the, the trainer uh, of the Clonbrian hero, uh, uh, Graham Holland. Uh, where I see from a report here in the Sunday Times uh, from earlier this year, there was um, uh, five greyhounds tested positive for traces of um, uh, pentobarbital, um, it's a banned substance. Uh, eventually, uh, apparently, uh, there was an issue that 
there were not clear guidelines in the Irish Greyhound Board in terms of dog feed, and therefore the owner uh, was found cleared. Uh, you, you could argue it was a, a loophole, certainly that is the impression I got from the media reports. But then the same trainer uh, with a dog, and this is a champion dog, as you know, uh, indeed you would have presented um, the Laurel, uh, and in fairness to yourself, you were there as Minister, so I don't wish to in any way, but I just say you are familiar, familiar with the dog. This dog's won everything, it's cleaned up. This is a champion dog, and this has become an international story because, unfortunately, the same stable, if you like, the same trainer now is connected with this dog being failed three drug tests, including when it won uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that actual uh, event that you were at. Uh, and the excuse given is that cocaine can you know, pass through cash onto hands, and then when somebody pets a dog. But the Washington Post report absolutely rubbished that. They said that the, the trace of, of cocaine that would come from a note or, a, or, a, or a, a 10 or 50 or whatever it is note and find its way into the bladder of a dog is just it's nonsense. You know? So there, there are serious issues. And the question marks from the Irish Greyhound Owners and Breeders Federation, uh, and they have written about this extensively, and I'll wrap up with this, Caroline. thanks for your patience. The Irish Greyhound Owners and Breeders Federation, you know, who, who are people who are trying to clean up the sport, have serious criticisms of the Irish Greyhound Board, Board Nagon, serious criticisms about their success uh, in terms of tackling this. But for like, you know, your champion, you know, your, 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 your champion, uh, well, it, it's actually a, a bitch, but champion dog um, to have found himself in, in this situation. And for these question marks to be hanging over the industry, I, I really think we should be asking more of the Irish Greyhound Board. I really do. Uh, because uh, we're here again, releasing very serious public money. We, we had this debate last year, um, and I, I appreciate. I want to say this finally. I do appreciate my colleagues who, who talk about the financial, uh, you know, return of horse racing and greyhound, and, and, and how proud we are of of of, um, Senator, you're over a minute, uh, of 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 our you know our horse breeding industry. No, oh, absolutely. And I think that's fair. I think that's fair to put that on the table. I think that's absolutely fair. But all I'm saying is. We have a serious problem in the greyhound industry with doping. It's a serious problem, and we need to confront it from government and demand better outcomes because this is deeply embarrassing to have the Washington Post and, and other international newspapers okay. reporting on it. It, it makes it laugh in stock. Thanks, and there's Senator. wonderful people in the industry, and it's bringing them down. And I wrap up Irish Greyhound Owners and Breeders Federation, these are good, decent uh, uh, greyhound owners uh, and breeders, and, and, and they want it sorted. So we need to sort it out. You okay. know? Thank you, Senator. Minister, I call you to respond. Um, thank you very much, uh, Look, I'd like to thank um, the uh, Oireachtas colleagues who have uh, addressed uh, the, the motion before the House. Um, I, I just want to deal with the, the, the latter issue and the broader greyhound uh, issues, um, if I might, first in, in, in summary. Um, in 2016, there were 5,387 uh, analytic samples taken from greyhounds, and 48 resulted in a positive test. 48 out of 5,387. Now, in my view, that's 48 too many. And there are issues around the 48 around the level and the circumstance and the context in, in terms of uh, interpretation of those results, which I don't propose to go into, but I wouldn't like it to go out and I don't specifically intend to comment on any individual case or media coverage uh, on these matters because there are media outlets that are entirely hostile to the industry and will avail of every opportunity to denigrate the industry. It's important to put it in context, it's a relatively small issue. It gets disproportionate media coverage. However, as I said, 48 is 48 too many. And one of the objectives in the context of the, the legislation that is imminent, imminent is to give a new regulatory statutory framework to the industry. So the legislation that I hope um, will be approved by government before the end of this year and, and, and debated in these houses early in 2018 will deal with integrity in the, in the greyhound industry, will deal with governance um, and all of the other issues which are currently given its um, statutory uh, 
structures are inadequate. And uh, in fairness, uh, at, at the uh, pre-legislative scrutiny, a lot of you know, uh, heavy lifting was done by, by the Oireachtas Committee, and that has been taken on board and I think will be reflected. And obviously, as it passes through the House, we would hope that it becomes a better piece of legislation by virtue of the input that members can have. But I wouldn't want it to go out that um, you know, th this is an industry that has a, a problem that's out of control. Um, and I think those figures, 48 out of 5,387 tests in 2016, gives an indication. Obviously, in those 48, there are questions of interpreting results subsequently, and I don't propose to, to go into uh, comment in that detail. Um, on, on, I, I, I take Senator Daly's uh, broadly positive uh, comments on, on uh, the proposal and the, f uh, the funding, and I, I also take his point about you know, that we would like that it would be more, that it's actually it's not increasing on last year. But bear in mind, last year's allocation was six million more than the previous year, and the previous year's allocation was six million more than the year before that, and the allocation the year before that was six million more than the previous year. So we've had three successive years of a substantial increase, and this is the first year. In the context of what was a difficult budgetary circumstance, you know, it is, um, it is uh, you know, remaining at the same level. Um, but I am satisfied uh, that you know, there is adequate funding there. Uh, in the broader sphere, for example, in the broader equine sector, we have proposed increased funding in the sport horse sector, which is another area in the equine industry that there is significant potential. It's funding following an Indicon report, and I'm going to come to the, the, the harness racing issue, it's, it's funding following implementation of Indicon recommendations in terms of governance there. And um, I think there's significant reason to be optimistic that that sector can, can progress further uh, on the basis of the, the <coughs> analysis done by Indicon in, 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 uh, on, on the horse sports sector. Yes, it, it is an all-island industry, and Brexit brings a degree of uncertainty as to how all of that will, will, um, will develop. Uh, certainly, we've had considerable engagement with the sector uh, on uh, Brexit matters and the all-island nature and the tripartite governance between Ireland, the UK, or between Ireland, uh, the UK, and France on movement of horses, etc. And it's, it's a cause of significant concern, and one that we have brought to the attention of the, the Barnier negotiating uh, team also. Um, and I also note your observations on um, matters currently before the WRC, uh, which are ones that we, we retain obviously an interest in a watching brief on. I'm very conscious of the fact that this would have an adverse impact on the sector generally, but particularly so for smaller operations, smaller yards and, and training and breeding establishments. And um, you know, we, we await the outcome uh, of, of the WRC deliberations on the matter. Um, Deputy or, or Senator Mulhern raised the issue of animal welfare, and that's obviously one of the issues that will be part and parcel of the, the new legislation, improved standards in, in, in uh, greyhound welfare. Um, and, um, you know, I think that, uh, again, you know, we will always get uh, the adverse uh, publicity around any animal welfare issue. But we, we, my department is working significantly with, with a variety of voluntary um, animal welfare organisations giving significant funding to them um, and I indeed propose to, to do so again this year and increase the funding and allocations will be made shortly in that area to work with organisations and there is no, there will be no hiding place in, in, in my department and indeed the law is quite significantly improved in this area now to ensure that people who are guilty of abuses in, in animal welfare uh, will be dealt with. Um, Senator Daly mentioned Kilbegan. Uh, Senator Mulhern mentioned Ballon Robe. Uh, both will be aware that there is under this funding a, a programme of improvements in capital investment in, in race courses underway. Uh, I've, I, unfortunately, whereas I have passed Kilbegan in recent times and visits to uh, your part of the country, Senator, I haven't been in the race course yet. It's a, a treat that awaits. Uh, um, but um, I, have seen, I have seen in other race courses around the country the investment that's going in. And that's critical to the punter that's coming in as well as to obviously to the, the, the um, welfare of, of horses well, improving facilities at race courses. Um, and I, I do take your point also that uh, you know, 
race meetings, uh, be they greyhound or horse racing meetings, would be much the poorer if we were to lose the colour associated with the, the on-course bookmakers. And I know there have been issues uh, in that regard between HRI and, and, and on-course bookmakers. Uh, I'm led to believe that that's substantially uh, resolved, um, and I hope that is the case, because I do think um, it would be a rather colourless place uh, if we were entirely dependent on the online fellows on their mobile phones placing their bets or uh, the tote betting, etc. So I think, I think that's something that we need to be, to be conscious of. Um, harness racing, look, I, I, I dealt with this and I appreciate uh, Senator McLaughlin's uh, issue um, here. And I've met with these people and I understand where they want to get to. Uh, there is a, a, an Indicon report. Um, it's quite clear, you know, um, the road to be travelled. I don't think that's a journey, that, that a destination that can be reached overnight. And I appreciate it's a challenge uh, to the organisation. But in terms of disbursement of public funds, we have to be sure that um, you know, the organisation is fit for purpose. And I believe they can get there. But I think it will take time for them to, to uh, you know, establish themselves in the area of corporate governance in terms of a five-year strategy, etc. Um, and we will work with them, and I have made this point to them. My department's door is open in terms of guidance and advice. We are increasing the funding available under a pilot program that we have run uh, with them up to now as a signal of our goodwill, but we will work with them to try and get them to where we want them to be because we see public gain to be had as well from uh, you know, being able to work with, with the uh, Irish Harness Racing Association. Uh, not just to achieve the potential of the sector, which is undoubtedly significant and untapped uh, relatively at the moment, but also in terms of you know, the whole um, issue around uh, horse welfare, um, sulky racing on public roads, etc., and, and ha having an appropriate structure where that can be dealt with in an in, in appropriate setting rather than on public roads where it's, um, it's unauthorised. Uh, it, in many instances, and it's ungoverned, um, and I think putting a proper competitive structure around that would be beneficial to everybody. Um, yes, I don't, hope I haven't uh, missed anything. Um, but look, I uh, appreciate the points made by uh, members, and uh, I will reflect on those that are not specifically germane to the, to the motion, but uh, I, I thank the members for their support of the uh, proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Um, um, is the motion agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, Minister. We we'll move on so to the next item, item number five, which is statements on Ireland's bid for the European Banking Authority. Wait for the Minister there.